We're here today for Meet Your Neighbor to have a conversation this morning with Hibiscus Rose. Good morning, Hibiscus. Thank you for having me in your home this morning and spring. It's lovely to be here and to be with you. Uh, one thing I know about you is that you are a person who likes to live in the moment. And so I was wondering if you could tell a little bit about what you are doing in life right now. How are you living your life right now? Well, uh, thank you, Cheryl. Um, before I answer that, I just want to say thank you to you for being here. Uh, I'm grateful for this experience. You're welcome. Um, and uh, I would say at this time in my life, I'm uh, because of the circumstances I have right now, I'm uh, taking things a little slower than I have uh, in the past. I'm uh, sort of uh, taking each day as it comes, uh, even uh, more mindfully than I had before. Um, and what, what happened? Well, I, I, uh, last August I was um, enjoying a day at the ocean and uh, I ended up uh, being flipped on my head by one of the waves that I was body surfing oh. in. <laughs> <laughs> so, Body surfing. Uh, hmm? Yes, where we, where were uh, down we at Narragansett. Uh, uh, good just, waves, I oh, imagine. It was beautiful, yeah. The mm -hmm. water was 70. It was great. And I had a great time before, before I had my uh, tumble. Oh. And uh, so I'm recovering from a uh, compression fracture. Oh, and, uh, but, you know, the good news is I am recovering. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm, being, I'm able to do a lot more than I could. Uh, last August, and um, so I'm I'm grateful. You know, it could be uh, my, the outcome could have been a lot worse, mm -hmm. and uh, mm -hmm. I just it's just sort of uh, stopped me in my tracks. Though I I've, I'm needing to take things a little slower these days, and mm -hmm. uh, and just be you know very present mm -hmm. um, more than ever, um, which is which is really a blessing. I mean, it, it it's uh, it's really how I want to live anyway to be present to life as it as mm -hmm. it comes. You know, instead of chasing it or running. Mm. And um, so uh, a lot of what I do today is I, I, I do um, any type of activities that are more local. Um, I'm uh, involved with the Women's Art Forum in Hopkinton and uh, it's a wonderful community of women. And, uh, and I uh, have been able to attend the poetry readings that are here every month. Uh, Especially since uh, my my incident, because I used to work every weekend, mm -hmm. and uh, and now I'm I'm free to go to attend a lot of things that I really enjoy. Mm -hmm. So, and so, I I write poetry. So, uh, so. Um, I was wondering if you'd be willing to read one of your poems, maybe to get started. Certainly, I'd be happy to. Sounds like you do a lot of uh, things related to the creative uh, life. Uh, and being involved with the arts and in writing, and mm -hmm. uh, so if you could give us a little sample, I'd be I'd love to. Um, uh, this this poem I uh, I wrote uh, last year uh, when my mother turned ninety, mm -hmm. and now she's ninety one. So I have uh, uh, improvised a bit and changed the figure mm -hmm. to ninety one. Uh, so uh, this is called Mother's Turning Ninety One. Mother's turning 91, what a gift to have her here. Although she's very limited, she still is very dear. She's mostly in the moment and content with very little. No matter how many visitors, she still loves being right in the middle. Although a pretty new scarf delights her to no end, she keeps it for a moment and then passes it on to a friend. Her presence is a reminder we only have this day. Enjoy what is, and then let go with whatever comes our way. Mm. Wow. And well, so. thank you. That's a, a lovely and powerful poem thank for your you. mother. Have thank you, you had opportunity to share it with her? <clears throat> yes. I, well, I read it at her birthday last year. and um, Special. Actually, yes. And there's a copy hanging on the wall in her room. She, she's uh, staying, uh, living in a... Um, nursing home in Sudbury, and, uh, and I'm not so sure she's tuned into the fact that the poem's on the wall, but it's there. Mm -hmm. and, um, and, and she still, you know, enjoys, enjoys 
minimally, but she does enjoy the moment. She, that's, that's the only place mm -hmm. she stays. So mm -hmm. she's a good power of example mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. even. Uh, so um, you're referring that she uh, needs some assistant at this, assistance oh, yes, at this yeah. point. Oh, yes, yes. She has Alzheimer's. So, mm -hmm. um, so she, many she, do in later life. Yes. And my goodness, she's 90 to have a mother uh, yeah. continue on yeah. uh, to yes. that age. Yes. How is that for you um, uh, these days as you, I know uh, you have been a mother uh, and uh, also you are a daughter uh, yes. who is visiting a mother and what does uh, that require of you? It sounds like you visit and you are thoughtful mm -hmm. for her mm -hmm. uh, and writing about her. And yes, yeah, yeah, well I do. I'm, I'm grateful that she She's, uh, she just moved to Sudbury. Uh, she was in a, a, play, a nursing home in uh, North Reading, and now she's much closer, so I'm, I'm grateful it's easier to go see her. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, uh, and I'm grateful she still knows me, and mm -hmm. she knows all my, my siblings, you know, and mm -hmm. I have 11 siblings. Oh, wow, so my that's, goodness. That's pretty good that she knows all of us. Oh, <laughs> so uh, so that, that's a blessing. And, uh, and my, my daughters um, go, to, and, and my grandchildren go mm. to see her, so. Wow. Um, so How fortunate it, for her to have so yes. many family members come in to see her. Yes, yeah, it is. It's, it's, it's a tremendous blessing. So going a little backwards, you mm -hmm. come from a family of 12 children? With yes, yeah, there was wow. uh, the originally, uh -huh. thank you, there was originally 13 and mm -hmm. uh, uh, one of my, uh, my little sister only lived for a couple of days, mm -hmm. um, but, uh, but there's, um, I have two sisters and nine brothers. And uh, and I'm I'm the firstborn, so um, that's so a that, lot of brothers. That's a lot of brothers. <laughs> that's a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and, for one home. Uh, yes, and two yes, parents. Uh, yes. Where did you grow up? I grew up in Marlboro, oh, okay. um, and um, I lived there most of my life. Mm -hmm. um, I, we moved there when I was three. Did you grow up in a giant house? Yes, uh, oh. actually. Uh -huh. Well, we we lived in 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 a, a mid-sized home mm -hmm. until my mother was expecting the eighth child, mm -hmm. and then we moved into a very large home that mm -hmm. was um, uh, actually referred to as a mansion. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. uh, there was five bedrooms, and uh, th it was it was filled. We filled it filled to capacity, <laughs> and and everybody always had friends over. Mm -hmm, so mm -hmm. I, it, it was uh, our house was the place everybody wanted to go because mm -hmm. there was always so much going on there. Mm -hmm. Needless to say, there was it, there was my mother's expression was there was never a dull moment, ah. and uh, mm -hmm. and and there was not. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so mm -hmm. um, and I, being the oldest, I I sort of was born into the role mm -hmm. of being responsible. So. Um, a caretaker. A caretaker mm -hmm. and, and, you know, and being overly responsible, mm -hmm. you know, all my life. Mm -hmm. So, um, so it's, it's been an interesting journey to, um, you know, to move from being responsible for everybody else to mm -hmm. being responsible for myself, you know, mm -hmm. so. Yeah. It's, Did uh, you, so you had to help care for your brothers and sisters? Yes, yes I did. And yeah. you have a uh, chores around the home as well? Um, well, you know, I truthfully I didn't have a lot of chores. Mm -hmm. um, mostly my responsibility was taking care of the, mm -hmm. ch the, the younger children mm -hmm. and um, taking them out for walks and helping getting them fed and ready for bed and bathing them and mm -hmm. so it, it was I, I was fortunate I didn't have to do much housework mm -hmm. well maybe there wasn't much time otherwise so, I had no. one brother and I remember that was a lot yeah never mind how no many there was not enough time and, and it was not it was not my mother's priority mm -hmm. that the housework uh, was not a big issue it was she, she just needed help with the children mm -hmm. and, um, and it was good for me because it gave me an out that way I could get out of the house as long as I took a few children with uh, me. <laughs> so, What did you like doing when you were a child in your playtime? Uh, well, uh, you know, I, I'm not so sure I did a lot of deciding what I'd like to do. I, I, was, I, was, uh, I was mostly trying to um, just get through each day. Uh -huh, I mean, it, yeah. was, it was sort of a uh, uh, more of a survival uh, mm -hmm. environment. Um, there was a lot going on. and. Um, and there was some illness in the house, so um, 
I just learned a lot of survival skills, mm -hmm. and, uh, mm -hmm. but I, I also did love to play any chance I could fit that in. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. I, I just remember playing jump rope with my girlfriends and, mm -hmm. you know, um, I went to 12 years of parochial school, so I spent mm -hmm. a lot of my days in school. A lot of homework. Um, How was school for you? Um, Parochial school, yes. I think you mentioned French also. Uh, in high school, yes. Uh, I went to a, a St. Girls French Academy mm -hmm. and we were required to um, take four years of French, uh, which was such a blessing because I didn't even know that I loved languages until I was taking them. And uh, mm -hmm. so I, I, I'm not fluent, but I can carry on a, a conversation in oh. French. So that oh. that's great. And. Uh, and then I did have the opportunity to go to Paris a couple of times oh. after I got out of high school. And so. use your French then? I did. Mm -hmm. I used my French. And, uh, and were you accepted for your French uh, you, uh, with people there? Oh, yes. Uh -huh. In fact, mm -hmm. I, I met a, a, a lovely young man when I was 18 in Paris, and we corresponded for a year uh, mm -hmm. with letters I wrote in English and he wrote in French. Uh -huh. <laughs> And, uh, and then I met him the following year at the airport again mm -hmm. and when I was 20. Um, so um, that was kind of fun. Mm -hmm. um, it, 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 didn't, it didn't flower and go anywhere mm -hmm. after that, but it was, it was just fun to have that contact. and uh, A good moment in time. It was, it was good, it, and it sort of was the beginning of my learning, really loving travel. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. I, I actually went to business school after high school and majored in travel. Mm -hmm. um, and I got hired as a travel agent, but I didn't pursue that. Um, circumstances changed, and um, I ended up traveling with my grandfather for five weeks that summer. So when I came back, the job was gone at the travel agency, uh -huh. and so I worked for the phone company. Oh, <laughs> um, wow. But it was worth having that trip. You know, I traveled to um, Ireland with him for five weeks, and my, my brother came um, uh, with with the two of us, and my brother and I, John, um, left Grandpa in Ireland with the relatives and wow. traveled alone uh, to four countries in Europe. And, and how old were you then? I was 18 and John oh. was 17 wow. when we did that. What a great experience. Yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, and then I, I went, I loved it so much that I saved all my money and I went back to Europe again mm -hmm. when I was 20 and went to um, Rome this time, and I had my 20th birthday there, and mm -hmm. it was during the Ecumenical Council uh, mm -hmm. at the time in the Catholic Church, and uh, so, and I loved anything to do with television, and Fulton J. Sheehan was the only bishop I knew that had a TV show, so I invited him to my birthday party, and I got a two-page note from him <laughs> saying he was sorry he couldn't make it, <laughs> gave me all his blessings, but I had three bishops and um, a rabbi and a minister at my mm. birthday party in wow. Rome. Wow, that's 20. a different kind of birthday party when you <laughs> yeah. turn 20. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was very ecumenical. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I loved it. It was, mm. it was just a great memory for mm. me. And, uh, but then I came back and I got married at 21, and that was the end of my traveling days mm. for the next 33 years. So, oh. um, so I'm grateful I went when I, during the, the time yeah. that I mm. had the opportunity. Mm. Yeah. Sounds like great time of adventure. Yes. And then yeah. the settling down, and you yeah. were married and yeah. had a family. I did. I, I had a family. and uh, Where was that? Uh, that was in Marlboro. Mm -hmm. And um, I had uh, five little girls, and wow. uh, including twins. Mm -hmm. And um, they were all born very close together, so mm -hmm. it, was, uh, it was a very uh, sort of a blur to me mm -hmm. <laughs> in some ways. Um, the, the, an interesting thing is my, my last three daughters, uh, we named them, uh, their names start with B, and, um, and I think it was a few years after they were born before someone asked me why I did that, and I wasn't even aware that I did that. <laughs> I didn't. I, I, that, that was just not part of, uh -huh. part of my, I had no, no agenda or plan about it. <laughs> we, we just came up with names the best we could. <laughs> I, but I, we were very blessed because they were all very healthy and lovely children. Mm -hmm. so, oh, wow. Yeah. So five daughters. So five pretty daughters. Pretty close in age. In, five daughters within five years. Oh, yeah, boy. That, uh -huh. that was... Uh, that was a very interesting time, you know, mm -hmm. but... Um, what would you say you learned from your years in raising daughters, so many daughters? Uh, what well, you learned, one of the things you learned most from that time? I, I think one of the biggest things I learned is that 
children do what you do, not what you say. Mm -hmm. And um, so if I, the biggest um, gift I could give my children would be my power of example. Mm -hmm. And, um, and that's, a, that's a great thing to learn. Um, mm -hmm. it, it, it's much more powerful than, um, you know, digressing on what I think would be best for them or giving advice or, mm -hmm. um, you know, thinking, thinking I know, you know, ha that I have the answer. Right, right. Um, so, uh, and, and it really enhances my relationship with them mm -hmm. when I am more of a listener and, and rather than an advisor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, well that does sound very uh, important and mm -hmm. uh, embracing of our human nature. So. Yes, yeah, and of course I didn't learn that overnight, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I remember hearing that by the time you know how to raise children you're out of a job. <laughs> and, uh, and, and I think there's a lot of fact in that. Mm -hmm. um, so I did the best I could mm -hmm. um, with, you know, the knowledge I had at the time. But, you know, as so many parents, uh, you know, I, I, if I had most of the things that I regret are because I didn't know that I didn't know um, about mm -hmm. so many things, you know, so. Uh, but it was a learning experience and I'm grateful for it. I've, my, my, my daughters are my greatest teachers. Uh, what do they teach you? Not to worry so much, mm -hmm. to just, just mm -hmm. um, enjoy, you know, and, mm -hmm. uh, and just uh, go with the flow. I mm -hmm. mean, they're, they're very, they're very um, uh, beautiful girls that um, really are active in their own communities and um, they just have a, a, a very lovely way of living in the world. So mm -hmm. um, I, I'm, I'm just grateful, you know, to know them. Mm -hmm. and to be um, parts of their lives. Uh -huh. Well, yeah. that's beautifully said. Yeah. And do you have grandchildren? I do. I have 12 grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> the same number you grew up with. <laughs> yes, <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh. uh, and I didn't plan that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, I have six grandsons and six mm -hmm. granddaughters. Mm -hmm. And um, four of my grandchildren live in Australia. One oh. of my daughters married an Australian. And uh, they come home every three years. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure I'll probably be going to visit there someday, but mm. that's not happened yet. And um, and I have another grandson who's studying in Rome right now. So um, I have Did an he have international a birthday party there. No, not yet. He's too little for that, uh -huh. but he probably will. Uh -huh. um, he's uh, he's quite a little world traveler already. Mm -hmm. And um, all of my grandson grandchildren uh, are. Uh, just all amazing mm -hmm. in their own ways. I, I, I attend their soccer games and football and basketball and mm -hmm. uh, track. So it, it's wonderful. It gives me a chance to see them and see my daughters. Yeah. Well, it sounds like family mm -hmm. is a very large and full part of your life mm -hmm. still. Yes. Um, and uh, you uh, had mentioned uh, living in Marlboro. Um, yeah and uh, being busy with family for many years mm -hmm. and uh, and now you're here what happened uh, after raising daughters and they mm -hmm. grew up past you got past uh, adolescence with five daughters and they went off and uh, then it was time for you and what happened next uh, well a lot i was sort of amazed at how much uh, i've packed into these years mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. I, I, until i think about it it just doesn't seem that way mm -hmm. but um I, uh, I ended up, uh, I lived in, in that same house uh, that, I, that, that my ex-husband and I raised our children in, uh, and I was there for 27 years, mm -hmm. and, um, and at that point my children had all grown and gone, and uh, I, I really, uh, and I was working as a switchboard operator for an insurance company, and I, I really knew that, that there was something else I was needing to do, but I didn't know what, and I, I, um, I, I took uh, the time to a year off from uh, from work, and just spent some quiet time, and just um, really sort of stayed in a in a place of uh, being, and I I just had this feeling that I had completed the first part of my life, that mm -hmm. my children were raised, and um, they all had their own lives, and 
I didn't need that, you know, the, the house with, you know, three, three bedrooms or four bedrooms. And um, so I, I just sort of let go to see what would happen. And uh, one day one of my daughters mentioned she would like to buy my home and, uh, and I, um, I, you know, accepted her offer. And, um, and then I just uh, waited to see what my next move would be. And my trash collector came by one day, and uh, I had developed a relationship with him because I had been home for a year. So I went up to, out to let him know I was leaving, and uh, and he said, you know, where where are you um, going? I said, well, I don't know. I, I just want to move where I can be, not not have thing anything holding me back. Mm -hmm. And and he said, well, how about an RV? And uh, and I said, well, I, I have no experience in an RV. And he says, oh, you could manage it. And he says, actually, up in uh, Pepperell, I have a customer that I see a sign out that they're selling an, uh, their RV. And I thought, well, I'll check it out. Well, I ended up buying the RV. <laughs> and six weeks after my daughter's offer, I took off in the wow. RV. Uh -huh. And I... Uh, Where'd you, you know, go? I, well, actually... Um, I, I didn't go too far initially. Mm -hmm. I, my, the first campground I went to was out in Bolton. Mm -hmm. I mostly had to learn how to operate it and how to live in it. And uh, it was an old RV, so it was not you know, anything that was going to be getting me too far. But it was a place to, to you know, put my head at night. And, mm -hmm. uh, and I was so happy to not have attachments, you know, mm -hmm. that uh, the house was gone and, um, and everything in it was gone and, and anything that that I felt I would maybe want to leave to my daughters in my will. I let, I, let, I left them then. Then, I didn't, um, you know, I didn't, I didn't wait to, to, you know, until I'm passing on to, to let go of things. Mm -hmm. I thought this is the time because I couldn't put anything in the RV anyway. So that was a, a brave thing to do to shift over to that, and and so you lived in it for how long? I actually lived in it for about six years. Ooh. Yes, uh -huh. uh, and uh, and and I, I really loved it. Uh -huh. It was so so such simple living, and mm -hmm. um, I I ended up uh, I lived in Bellingham for a while in a, in an RV camp down there, and I also lived in Marlboro. Uh, there was a, a beautiful meadow uh, with six hookups for RVs, and mm -hmm. so I was there for a few years, uh -huh. and it was it was just lovely, and. Um, I, and then what? And then, um, well, actually, a year after um, I moved into the RV, I uh, went for lunch one day with uh, um, a friend and uh, and a friend of hers, and the the friend who lived in Fitchburg uh, that invited us, and she was an um, an African lady from Zimbabwe, and had guests there that week, and um, one of her guests invited my friend and I to come visit her. In Africa, and uh, my friend couldn't go, but mm -hmm. I um, gave it some thought over the next couple of months, and I knew that living in the RV for the winter wouldn't be that, you know, great an idea. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So I thought, well, Africa for the winter would be pretty good. So I went. Uh, I, wow. I, I went on my own. And, Where uh, in Africa? I went to Zimbabwe. Uh -huh. It's it's in the mm -hmm. southern part of Africa. Mm -hmm. Before I went to Africa, I went to Ireland, mm -hmm. and uh, because. My last trip was 33 years previous, and my last place to go to was Ireland, and I thought it would be a good beginning to go back to Ireland. I went without any reservations or any plan, and um, and I just, you know, got off the plane, and, and I, I slept in a and b for 14 hours and went back to the airport to rent a car, and that uh, didn't feel like the right thing to do. So I just sat and waited for guidance on what to do next, and. Uh, it occurred to me that there was this castle in uh, Enniscordy in County Wexford that um, my friend had told me about, and I thought, well, it's a beginning. So they, I went to the desk at the airport, and uh, and now this sounds, you know, like I just sort of did this all very casually and easily. It was not, you know, I was definitely out of my comfort zone and taking a leap of faith each moment that I, mm -hmm. you know, because I didn't have a plan, and letting go of, of Controlling and planning mm -hmm. is is usually means I have to go out of my comfort zone, mm -hmm. and um, so the lady at the desk uh, called a woman and she said, "Yes, I have a room in my B and B," uh, and she says, "Well, I have an American woman at the desk that looks very tired and she's traveling alone." And the lady said, 
tell her I'll be at the bus stop waiting for her. And I just knew I was on the right track. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I took a bus to Dublin and then a bus to Enniscorty and, and I stayed with this lady for a week. She drove me all over Ireland and we had a oh, wonderful experience. Wonderful. So and then I went to Africa and um, again I lived with four different African families. Mm -hmm. um, for how long? For six months. Mm -hmm. I had an open-ended mm -hmm. ticket. Mm. And um, and I uh, I just uh, lived what you know within their their families. I just you know did whatever they did each day and uh, just sort of went with the flow. It was a, such a fabulous experience. Oh, that the wonderful. first lady was uh, uh, quite primitive. She's the one that invited me, and mm -hmm. uh, I have to say, a rather challenging experience. Uh, but I just stayed in the moment, and uh, and it just you know. It just evolved. You've had a great, a great experience there, and yes. I know you've done a bit of traveling otherwise, and you speak a few languages. I do. Uh, um, what are they? I do. Uh, well, I studied Chinese uh, oh. for uh, 15 months, uh, just over in Bellingham. I had a tutor, and loved it. And so and Chinese and French Chinese and, and French and uh, and uh, Portuguese. Um, I have a lot of Brazilian friends, so I speak a lot, you know, significant amount of Portuguese and. Uh, I speak um, a little Italian, uh, a little uh, uh, Lebanese, a little, uh, I'm trying to think, I speak a, a little, oh, uh, Korean. <laughs> well, I, I, you have, you sound, uh, what a full life. Yes. Uh, you have led in living in the moment indeed, and I know we have to wrap up at this point, uh, but I want to thank you for a little bit of go learning about you and, and your life, and I was wondering if you could end with the language of poetry and share one last poem with us. I would love to, Cheryl. Uh, this poem is called Taking It In. Sitting quietly, attentive to life, watching, listening, taking it in. The sky air so blue, the trees gentle rustling, watching, listening, taking it in. Moment to moment, life in the present, watching, listening, taking it in. Yeah, that's beautiful. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you. Thank you for your interview today. It's been my pleasure.